Hey guys, welcome back to 90 Feet From Home. I'm your host, Ashley, and today we are going to talk about the roles of different managers and coaches in baseball. And before I get started, I am gonna show you guys a new shirt that I've got, and I know this one will be contentious because I do have a lot of male viewers, and I love all of you guys, and please don't take it personally. I just saw it and really enjoyed it. And I thought, given that I do run a baseball explanation channel, it was fairly fitting. So nobody be offended, please, I hope. Anyway, I just bought this shirt. And it says, knows more about baseball than most dudes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like I said, it's just for fun. I thought it was really cute. Uh, I got this one at Live Love Game Day where I get most of my sweaters and baseball items from. And this one I think is still available. So they often sell out pretty quick, but I will leave a link down below. Uh, and again, Hashtag not sponsored. Um, although if they did want to sponsor me, I welcome that sponsorship because I love their stuff. So anyway, how does baseball's management hierarchy work? Well, at the very top, you have, of course, the owner, or in some cases, an ownership group, and they kind of manage the overall money of the team. They decide how much they're willing to spend, and they make the big kind of financial decisions for the team. And as exactly as it sounds, they own that team, and they reap the most financial reward when that team does well or poorly. Although, uh, even when a team does poorly, those guys are billionaires and still make a buttload of money. So they're doing okay even when their team has a bad year. Below them, you have kind of a general tier of management that is typically referred to as a general manager for most teams. And they kind of make the hiring and firing and moving of player decisions. They're all about the personnel. They are also the ones that will make the decisions on who gets traded, which free agents get picked up based on how much money the owners give them. And so they're kind of the, the general <laughs> manager of the team. So during an off season or even leading up to the trade deadline, they're gonna be the ones that make those final decisions on who gets moved, who gets brought on board and what that team looks like going into either the beginning of the season or the latter half. Most baseball offices refer to this role as the general manager and most teams do have a general manager. There are sometimes roles in between owner and general manager. So on some teams we see like chief of baseball operations, which is a title the Red Sox just gave to Heim Bloom, who just became their new kind of overall leader, while somebody who was already working for the team will get the kind of more general role of general manager. General General, 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 general. Oh, if only this were a drinking game. Uh, and others will have vice president of baseball operations. These are all kind of titles made up by the teams to kind of differentiate between who does the general manager roles, while other people may have higher up or different roles. And these roles may have different requirements of them than just picking which players are gonna come into the season. So different teams may have different structures, but you're typically always going to see a general manager. And that person is usually going to be the one hiring, firing, getting new players, and making the big decisions leading into the year. Now, from an actual coaching point of view, there are different positions on that field as well. So the field manager, who is never referred to as a field manager in my experience, but always just referred to as the manager, is basically the head coach. They make all the decisions on which player is going to play at which position, what the lineup is going to look like, when pitching changes are made during a game. Basically the general running of that team day to day during games is done by the manager. And again, it's officially a field manager, but nobody calls it that. Below the manager is the bench coach. And the bench coach is usually going to be picked by the manager rather than the general manager as somebody that they've worked with, have a lot of trust in, and have a very good communication relationship with. The bench coach is basically the manager second in command. So if that manager is ever thrown out of a game or is sick or needs to be on leave for any reason, the bench coach is going to be the one who steps in and takes over that management role. They also serve as sort of an advisor to the manager, giving them advice from their many years of baseball experience and trying to give them the best possible solutions when the manager may be struggling to decide certain aspects of the game. Basically, it's their trusted advisor. And that's why they'll usually pick somebody that they've worked with quite extensively extensively or know on a personal level and trust. Another thing about managers and coaches, typically almost all of them have previously been professional baseball players at some level or another. Perhaps not extended periods in major league play, but they'll have at least experienced minor league play at some point and will have likely managed a minor league team somewhere down the line. So these are guys who know baseball in and out, who've been around it their entire adult lives, and they really tend to understand the nuance 
nuances of the game because they've played it and they've been around it for such a long time. So then you have your pitching and bullpen coaches. And exactly as they sound, these are guys who help guide and train and improve your pitchers. So your pitching coach is going to typically work with your starting pitchers and they'll have more experience with guys in those long roles, trying to go seven or eight innings, trying to like navigate between three, four, five different pitches. They'll help work out any of the kinks or difficulties that those players may be having. A bullpen coach is a very similar coach. They are still a pitching coach, but they're going to work with the relief pitchers, guys who maybe only have one or two specialty pitches and who are only going to be coming in for maybe one or two innings at most. And they're really going to help kind of get the most out of those guys as well. Then on the offensive side of things, you have your hitting coach and your base coaches. And a hitting coach, of course, is exactly what it sounds like. These guys are going to work with your hard hitters and every hitter on the team to help adjust their batting stances, their swing, everything that goes into that hitter's particular approach, even as much as how they're choking up on the bat. Maybe they're holding it too high, too low. Maybe they swing too early, too much up in the zone, down in the zone. There's a million different things that can be tweaked and adjusted in a hitter's swing. And that is what the hitting coach is there to look at. They'll watch film together, take batting practice. They'll see all of those things and help those hitters navigate and improve their swings, their stances, and their overall batting. Base coaches are a little bit different since their role tends to actively appear during games, not before or after. So these guys are going to be at first and third base, and it's their job to kind of have in-game communication with base runners. So once a guy gets to first base, well, first thing they'll do is give their batting gloves to the coach. And if they tend to use a mitten, which is to protect your hands while you're running, the base coach will give them that. And then they'll also communicate about what the plan of attack is. Is this pitcher somebody you may want to steal on? Is he bad at throwing to first base? Is he slow at his approach? These are things that they'll have a chat about so that the base runner knows kind of what his next steps are. Similarly, your third base coach is going to be the one who guides base runners if they're coming around second at high speed and they can't necessarily watch what's going on with the ball in play, that third base coach is gonna be the one waving them home or telling them to stop. And you'll see very active third base coaches. It's a lot of fun to watch actually. Um, so they're gonna be the one guiding that player as to whether or not they should go home or stop at third. And they'll also relay information from the team's dugout to that runner. Are they bringing up somebody who may be bunting? Is their next step to perhaps watch in case a safety squeeze or suicide squeeze might be on the menu? These are the sort of things that we're going to see discussed by a third base coach if they have the opportunity to speak to that base runner. Otherwise, it's all hands, running, stopping, and that sort of thing. And those guys are very important in game and keeping things in play. Now, while not management or coaching, teams will have a head athletic trainer whose job it is to make sure that everybody is playing safely, to make sure minor injuries are dealt with, and that all of those guys are well conditioned and trained to be playing games 162 times a year. Similarly, they'll have a strength and conditioning coach who works under that head athletic trainer. They'll also have bullpen catchers who are very specifically placed not to play in games but to catch bullpen sessions from relief pitchers and that's just kind of a general breakdown of all the different management and coaching positions that you'll see in baseball and I hope this explains the different terms and what the difference between a general manager and a manager is because I know those two can sound very similar but are very different in practice uh, and so I hope you kind of have a better sense of what goes into managing and leading a team so if you enjoyed it give it a thumbs up down below and remember while you're down there to hit subscribe and ring the bell if you want to be notified every Tuesday Thursday and Saturday when a new episode episode goes live. And of course, you can always follow me on social media where I'm at 90 feet from home on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So until next time, guys, we'll see you again. Have a great day. Bye!